Alright everybody, welcome back to the Pennsylvania and Berwind. Today we're going to be doing some work a little bit further up the line. This is the junction off of the main line for the Pleasantville Secondary, which we've been working on the past couple of episodes. And I thought it would be kind of fun to put a little MOW facility here off to the side of this big Y interchange area. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I've also been feeling a little bit... Uh, a little bit stuck creatively, so I kind of went for something easy, I guess. Uh, we do make some progress in this video, I'm kind of happy with it, but um, inspiration has been running a little dry at the moment. I'm not really too sure why, but uh, this is the best that I could come up with at the moment. So there's a couple of things I want to address right away, and the first thing is um, the grid. I always get questions about the grid. Some people seem to notice weird anomalies, and for some reason, when I started working on this area, the grid was at a 45 degree angle from what it was supposed to be. I have no idea how or why I did that, uh, or what kind of a bug that is, but it's been sort of populating different parts of the P&B, sort of like the uh, the grid borders bug, where uh, the ground texture will kind of go around the, the border of the, the ground tile. No idea what causes that. Uh, so I actually spent a good portion of the, the beginning of this video, before I even started recording, relaying uh, a ground texture, a grid ground texture over top of the grid so that at least I had a 90 degree, a proper, you know, grid there. But in doing so, I lost that light grid, like sub grid underneath the yellow grid. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. It's very strange. Not something that I could recreate, um, but it is something that was happening while I was running the game. Like I'd kind of like turn my back and suddenly the, the tile behind me is now at 45 degree angle. I don't know. Very strange. Uh, the next thing that I was dealing with uh, might have even passed in the previous clip. I'm not even sure. The get tool, the little uh, little pincher thing that you can use to grab a ground texture or an, an asset that's already on the map, hasn't been working for me properly lately in SP4. Um, I'll go to use the get tool and it'll just come up with a totally different asset. Totally random. Uh, I have no clue why it does that. I ended up relaunching the game to get it to properly work, I guess. Uh, the same thing's been happening with my pick lists, where occasionally, I mean, if you, you'd have to slow the video down to see what I see, but occasionally as I'm thumbing through my pick list, the asset that I have selected in the pick list is, does not match the asset that's in the asset window. It's very strange, and uh, it seems to be an SP4 thing. I haven't reported it yet. I'm curious if anybody else has seen this or experienced it, because I can't really reproduce it, so I can't really report it as a bug. I mean, maybe the uh, the get tool and the, the you know the asset pick. Um, maybe I could report that, but the thing with the grid is just so weird, and uh, it, it kind of set me back a little bit. Uh, but anyway, I, I, those are two things I just wanted to point out before I really got into the rest of this video. Uh, but so essentially, the idea with this section again is just to have a small MOW siding. Um, this is about halfway between Grafton Yard and Allegheny, and it just seemed like a spot that would, you know, lend itself well to having a, an old siding, uh, with a, you know, a, a stub end or a runaround, and in this case I did both, um, that would maybe just have some, uh, equipment for maintenance services on the Pleasantville Secondary or the Moss Creek, Moss Creek Branch or the Pink Creek Branch, which are all right in this vicinity, so... It just seemed like a good thing to do. Uh, it's fairly simple. I've built a couple of these so far. I did one on the Rochester build, and I'm going to consider the, the yard on the WKNS kind of like a little MOW thing. So I did do some of that, and I used a lot of the same assets. I wanted to make it look like it was pretty busy here, like maybe they're doing a lot of work uh, restoring something, putting doing a lot of tie work. Uh, and, and just starting to update the area, whatever that might be. I don't know. At this point, I'm just totally clueless with uh, when the P&B takes place and what the state of the track is, because this thing has evolved so quickly and so rapidly over the years that I've been building it that I can't even keep up with it anymore. So I'm just kind of just building for fun at this point and things that just seem to, to look good. Um, so in order to, to get that look, I wanted to have a lot of ties piled up, some tracks, some rails. Obviously, there's going to be some big... Uh, big trucks parked around here. I thought that maybe these would load or unload ballast into some ballast hoppers for service nearby um, in some of the more remote areas because in theory the Pleasantville Secondary should be going into some more remote territory so it might be a little bit more difficult to get uh, a dump truck out there. It might be easier to just you know bring a train to actually do some track work or anything like that. Um, 
So, again, I kind of had a little bit of trouble trying to decide what to do with a lot of this area. And I don't, I, I think maybe I'm burned out. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not, I really don't know what what my issue is at the moment. But I think I might be a little bit burned out because I, it, I built this over the course of a couple of days. And ordinarily, it wouldn't take me that long to do something like this, which is kind of why I chose to do it. Because I kind of figured it would be a quick build that I could knock out in a couple of hours you know, place down a whole bunch of detail assets and just make the area kind of come to life pretty quickly. Um, but it was really slow going. Um, and I kind of just feel like I'm using a lot of similar assets over and over again. And I hate when I start to feel like that because then it makes me feel like I'm not doing anything new and original. And I'm just kind of like, you know, repeating the same processes that I've done a million times before. And that gives me a little bit of stress because I want to make sure that what I'm doing feels fresh every time I do it. Uh, maybe I just need to accept that some there's going to be some degree of repetition at some point, but uh, whatever. That's just that's just the thought process that I'm having here. So after this episode, I think I'm going to pass this map, the route back over to my buddy 44 Willies uh, to do a little bit more work on some of the other things, some of the other aspects that uh, I'm not working on that he's kind of taken over and uh, let him do some magic where I can take a little bit of a breather and just, you know, get myself refocused on on something i i've been doing a little bit more of the um the port la route you've probably caught a couple of my streams so far and i've been really enjoying doing that mostly because it's a dem map and everything is just kind of outlined right there for me so i don't really have to like squeeze so much creative juice out of my brain to to make it work i can kind of casually build a little bit more whereas something like this i really have to get creative uh there's nothing for me to look at i have to totally invent the scene and decide what i'm going to do with it um, which you'll see a little bit further into this episode. I, I start looking around at what the surrounding area is going to look like, and it took me a little bit to even decide, like, what what is this going to be? Is this going to be in the middle of the woods? That's not super exciting. Is there going to be a housing development nearby? Is there going to be, you know, I want to make things feel a little bit more alive. So it took me a little bit to make that decision, um, but I'm, I'm, I think it's kind of cool what I end up coming up with, and I'm talking ahead of myself a little bit, but we'll be there in just a second. Um, another thing that I kind of should be a good example of me like being out of sorts a little bit is um, doing some scenery work here sort of like prematurely like I, I shouldn't I usually don't place the grass down until I get the rest of the terrain built out I kind of my brain has just been a little bit scatterbrained so that's all I'm trying to say uh, it's been it's been uh it's been uh, tough. <laughs> That's all right. So at this point, I, I kind of made the decision. All right, let's put some kind of road up on a hillside. I kind of envisioned this scene where there might be a couple of houses up on a hillside looking down into the valley. And uh, down in the valley is where the railroad bed would be. So that's kind of the look that I'm going to go for here. And I basically just started off with where the road was going to be. I didn't worry about what the terrain was going to look like because I wanted to get the road in place first uh, and decide what the height of the road was going to be and what the shape of it was going to be. Because for me, when designing things totally from scratch like this, it's all about like what the the shape of the, the roadways and the track and all these kind of angles look like and how they kind of come together. So I laid out the road first and uh, right here I'm using, uh, well, once I put the, the plateau tool underneath the road, I brought it up all the terrain up to the level of the road. So right now I'm using the, uh, the what is this, the plateau tool or the, I don't know, yeah, wait, that's what I meant. This is the plateau tool. So I started using that to bring up all the terrain around it and get like some nice gentle slopes and then just using a lot of the terrain tools to slowly carve a mountain into the landscape. Um, I always say like if you're going to use the height up and the height down tool, use the bigger marquee, use a larger area and turn down the sensitivity work really slow. I think where a lot of people go wrong is that they go with these really small marquees because they feel like they don't want to mess up a huge area and then they have the sensitive sensitivity too high and what you end up with is this kind of like weird lumpy terrain. So if you go with a bigger uh, area, bigger marquee and you turn the sensitivity down really, really low, you'll have way more control over all of that. So uh, that's just my tip for that. And that's usually the way that I build. And just slowly start to shape the contours of the mountain. Don't be afraid to use the leveling tool or the plateau tool or anything like that to really start kind of carving things out. Um, and really the whole thing doesn't come together until you start placing down scenery on top of it. Because until then you're just kind of looking at the skeleton of the thing. And it might look a little bit funky. 
Uh, so up on this ridge here, I thought it'd be cool to put a couple of houses that are sort of looking down into the valley. Um, and I picked like a really beat up house, sort of a middle of the road house, and then a nicer house. So I just wanted to add a little bit of variety and uh, we're gonna spend a little bit of time decorating this. And I guess in the back of my head when I created this scene, I was kind of picturing um, part of the WKNS where it's sort of like across from, I don't even know where it is. It's halfway between Wanamaker and, uh, and the other town. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember the exact location of it. Over by the, um, over by the, the, the apple orchard. So that's kind of what I had in my mind a little bit. Uh, again, still being kind of fresh off that build since that really like occupied a tremendous amount of my time over the past couple of weeks, uh, which by the way, was just a lot of fun. That was a great project, but I'm happy to be moving on to other things. I'm happy to be back on the PNB, and I really wish I had a little bit more brain capacity to like make a ton of progress on this, um, which was originally my plan was to sit down with the route and just like bang out like a whole bunch of mileage, but I kind of just don't know what to do in certain areas and I don't want to just spam trees, I don't want it to be totally in the woods, and I don't want it to be like all farmland. Uh, I'm also sort of like in a struggle with what, what are the right assets to use anymore, I don't even know. Like I want to use these 3D trees, but they're really not so great for uh, in, working in the background and, and populating forests because they're just gonna totally just wreck your frame rate. So we've been using some of these other uh, blueprint trees, the JVC blueprints for background trees. And again, I mean, it's a matter of, I guess, laying, layering the, the billboard trees with these 3D trees and just trying to get some sort of semblance of depth and uh, hide the, the billboard trees with the 3D trees. Um, it, it seem, with this scene too, it's, it's a little bit challenging because I don't know how far back to sort of blend things because we've got tracks on all sides. So this little forest here, I probably could get away with doing all 3D trees, but do I really need to? So it's a matter of determining like where to transition from one into the other, particularly with this scene. That's what makes it a little bit complicated, but um, I probably spent more time on this part, this little background bit than I really needed to or was really necessary. Um, but you know, I'm tr trying to play around with some new assets too, some new textures. I've got a few new textures, these WP textures, which I found buried in my uh, my texture list uh, and there's some other really nice dark grass and uh, like undergrowth underbrush kind of looking textures so I've been trying to make use of those and uh, also thumbing through some more of these JVC grass splines as you can see here and uh, trying to mix things up a little bit add a little bit more variety to the map but also not I don't want to go too much because I don't want there to be you know if you go to download this map one day and there's gonna be 50 million download station assets to have to download, that's just, you know, that's, a, that's just a time sink. So uh, it's good to stick within some kind of a palette, but also to add some variety. And on a map that's this big and has, you know, been in progress for over this many years, uh, it's a little tough to, uh, to just pick a palette of assets and just stick with it from end to end, but um, we'll get there eventually. That's why, that's what 44 Willies is helping me out with. A big time. Uh, he's just going through some of the older areas on phase one and updating them with uh, some of the trees that I've been using, better grasses, better textures, uh, better shrubs and that kind of thing because there's all so much. I, I can't even remember how many assets were probably left over from trains 2010 or, tw or 12 even. Uh, I, come, I come across every once in a while these Caddylars grasses and Caddylars um, shrubs which I don't think, I remember when they were new I don't think that they're still really used like on the download station or anything like that, but I still have them from a million years ago. So, and they're on this route too. I'm pretty sure even on the release version. So trying to get rid of some of that old stuff, replace it with these newer, uh, the newer speed trees that keep coming out. And I'm, I'm hoping maybe sometime if there's any asset creators out there listening, uh, speed tree creators, per per particularly some fall and winter trees would be, you know, really nice. I'd like to do a, a winter scene. I would really love to do a fall scene sometime soon. Not on the PNB, but, you know, as some kind of a, another small build of some kind, maybe another DEM. It'd be nice to do something that's just, that's not spring or summertime, you know. A nice fall themed, uh, you know, scenic railroad would be really cool or um, something in the winter. I always picture like, you know, these, these great winter scenes from like the 19... 40s or 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. I would love to do something like that, but I just am not totally confident that there's a lot of assets out there that would help with that. And I guess the other thing is there's not a lot of buildings that have snow cover on them. So 
Yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing also is that I've never really sat down and tried to challenge myself to do it. I've never really looked and dug far into it enough to know what assets I could use and could not use. So maybe, maybe I'm just talking for no reason. <laughs> maybe there's, maybe I could do it. And there's plenty of assets out there, and I just haven't looked. Um, but I'm totally out of things to talk about today, so I'm just gonna let this run out. You guys can enjoy the time lapse that's coming up. Uh, it's just a couple of shots, but. Uh, I think it shows the area pretty decently. Uh, but I'd like to thank you guys for watching this episode. Stick it to the end. Enjoy the rest of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.